All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our pre tryout strength and conditioning for under 12s and under 4. Uh, can I just ask that everyone make sure their microphone stays on mute this morning? For those that have done my strength and conditioning sessions, for those that have done my strength and conditioning sessions previously, uh, you'll know that usually our sessions are fairly interactive. Uh, usually our, our sessions are fairly interactive. This morning's session is not going to be as interactive. So we're going to move at a pretty quick pace. We've only got an hour um, and we've got three programs to get through. Uh, and because we are recording this uh, to be used as a resource to refer back to, I won't be sort of coming around and, and coming back to the iPad as regularly as possible. And, uh, and watching your movements to sort of give feedback. So we will allow some time at the end of the session for, um, for, for questions. If anyone's got any questions, um, there will be time at the end for you to come over or I'll come over to the screen and, and answer any questions you might have. But otherwise, for the most part, this session is just going to be follow along with me. As I mentioned, we've got three, three strength and conditioning programs to get through this morning. Um, we're just going to do one set of every exercise. So we've got about 20 exercises to get through through the three programs. The warm up is the same for all three programs. So we'll only do the warm up once at the start. Um, you will need, preferably, you will need a foam roller of some description. So again, uh, our foam roller or some sort of a some sort of a self myofascial release. Uh, device, I guess, or, or, or equipment. Um, a couple of other things that will be really handy for you to have uh, throughout this program will be a mini band. So a mini resistance band of some description. Um, you can get them from Kmart. If you don't have them for today's session, don't stress. If you don't have a foam roller, don't stress. All this information will be also emailed out to everybody along with um, the, the follow along PDF template of the program. So the idea is that we go through each of the exercises today. Um, we're recording now, so we are recording this session. We will timestamp each of the exercises um, so that when you come to the video on YouTube or on our website, you can quickly skip along because you might be doing the program following along with the PDF in your own time after school or something like that. And you might not know, you know, one of the exercises right in the middle of the session, you can just jump on the link um, and quickly skip forward to that exercise and, and easily find that exercise to get the tutorial on it. So we'll get started with our warm up. Um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me. Okay. I can see a few of you guys are outside. Um, we, we, we won't, if you've got a basketball, that's okay. You can use your basketball for some of our sessions. You'll need a little bit of space, okay? So as you can see, I've got a bit of space here. Um, I've, got, I've, got a couple of, I've got a chair and an ottoman here. You guys could use a couch and any bench that you've got because um, we do have a couple of exercises where we will need to have our shoulders resting on a bench or a chair and possibly our legs as well. But don't stress if you can't do every single exercise we go through today in today's session. All right, it's just an opportunity for you guys to jump on this morning and see each of the exercise live. And then we're recording this and it will be uploaded after the fact. So, as I mentioned, we're going to get started with our warm ups. Come on! So, find it. Let's just, just make sure you're on mute, guys. Everyone on mute, thanks. I know how it's going to come on. Okay. All right, guys. So our first part of each of our programs that we start with, so our first program we're going to be going through today is our foundation, building the foundation. I call it bulletproof, okay, because it's a strength-based program, but we're going to start with a foam roll. So always grab our foam roll and hit some really key areas of our body. Okay, I'm just going to turn the screen down a little bit here. All right, key areas we want to hit. We're going to start with our glutes. All right, so I'm going to jump down on the carpet here. We're going to be foam rolling our glutes. So if I'm leaning to my right side here, I want to grab my right ankle and put it up on my left knee. Okay, and I'm just rolling back and forth, getting that, getting into that glute muscle. 
probably five rolls on each on each glute will be enough. If you've got a ball, I've got a little massage ball here. Okay, again, you can get these from Rebel Sport or Kmart. They can also be a really good alternative just because the shape matches our, our hips. So our hips are fairly sort of um, like circular. Okay, so sometimes in the muscles of our glutes, a bit different to our quads and our calves and our hammies in that they don't just run in a straight line. They kind of, they kind of curve around our, uh, the rest of our hips. So a ball shape can be really good to get into your glute. Otherwise, we're just going both sides of our body. And again, I've switched to my left here. So I've got my left hand on the ground. Rotate around here. I've got my left hand on the ground and I've got my left ankle up on my right leg. And I'm just shifting back and forth on that glute. If you've got any questions throughout today's session, feel free to chuck them up on the chat. If I get the chance to get to them, I will get to them as best I can. I know we've got some, some new people in today's session, which is fantastic. It's great to see so many of you here this morning. The next one we'll do is our ITB, which is the band that runs right down the side of our upper leg. So a big tendon. It can sometimes be quite tight when we've been playing and training a lot. We're just going to roll. So I like to stack my legs on top of each other. Okay, but if you've never done this before, it can be a little bit painful, a little bit tender. And you can just roll. I'm on my right leg, so I'm, I'm rolling my right leg right, right now. You can bring your left leg over just to take some of that weight off. I'm on my right elbow here. And again, five on either side. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail with the foam rolling because there is a lot of tutorial videos that you can get on YouTube or you guys know our warm-up protocol that's provided by Core Advantage. They've got some videos um, and resources that go into a lot of detail on, on our foam rolling techniques. But it is really important and we want to do at least five minutes before each of these sessions. As I mentioned, we're going through three sessions today, starting with our bulletproof session today, which is a strength-based program. Those that have done my programs uh, during lockdown, you'll notice a bit of a difference today. They're, they're very, we're gonna do our calves here. So I'm gonna skip my quads and my hammies for the moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump straight to my calves. Usually we would do our quads to so the front of our thigh and our hammies the back of our thigh. We're gonna jump straight to our calves and get moving here. Um, you notice a bit of a change. I've, I've moved a lot of, especially the strength-based session. Uh, has become very almost uh, like movement specific. So you'll see a, a huge transference to on court type movements because we are now really preparing to get back on court. So a lot of what you'll be doing in these programs is very movement based. So it mimics um, a vertical leap, it mimics, you know, a jab step, sprint takeoff. With my calves, I like to just stack my ankles on top of each other too, just get my feet sort of stacked on top of each other and put a little bit of extra pressure. But you could do both calves at the same time if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to rest them feet separate here, and that would just take a little bit of that stress off. All right. Very good. Okay, jumping up, foam rollers away. So we've got our dynamic warm up. So our dynamic warm up is a big part of uh, is a big part of all three of our sessions. Um, so again, similar movements. If you've done my session before, some of them will be pretty familiar to you. If you haven't, that's okay. Just continue to follow along. So. With our uh, dynamic warm up, we're going to start with our high knee skips. Okay, so a lot of what we do is movement based sprint technique work. So, with our high knee skips, I always start with my right knee up, left arm up. Okay, see how I've got a nice square angle in my left arm here and a nice square angle in my right leg. And we're just swapping and bounding. Okay, so see how I stay on the ball of my foot. I'm pushing down and I'm bounding, but I'm really driving my arms here. Okay, we're going to go for about 20 seconds. So I'm really driving that knee up and skipping. 
and that arm movement is just as important as the knee drive. Okay, so you should be able to do this one on the spot. Good. Okay, and hold it there. The next one again is a variation on star jumps. So you will have done this before if you've trained with me. There's a variation on our, our star jumps. So again, we're just rotating our arms across our body instead of overhead. Okay, so we start with our feet wide, arms wide, and as we bring our feet in, our arms cross over. These are called steel jacks. Okay, so this is nice and easy. Staying on the balls of our feet, <coughs> getting our heart rate up a little bit. So the seal jacks, about 20 seconds worth of these. Great job, guys. Balls of our feet, warming up our chest, wrapping our arms in front, warm up our back and shoulders as well. Three, two, one, excellent. Next one we've got is a new one. Uh, for those that have trained with me before, a bit of a new exercise. It's a side to side movement. So a little bit of a lateral movement, but we're building in. Um, we're also building in our, uh, our lunge technique a little bit as well. So if I move back here, uh, I'm going to start on the far left hand side of the screen and essentially what we're doing is a couple of skips across and then we're sitting down into a lateral lunge push off a couple of skips across sit into a lateral lunge so we're pushing side to side we're getting that sideways movement we're starting to warm up that hip starting to warm up that hip so it's like a multi-directional lateral skip we're sitting down into that hip just for you guys so we can isolate, keep going, but just so you can see what that movement looks like when we sit into that lateral lunge, we still sit that hip back. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm, I like to come up onto the, onto my heel on that, on that straight leg. So that straight leg, I come up onto that heel like so, helps me with a bit of depth on that side. All right, hold it there. So then we're gonna, we're gonna change that one. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll do that one about five times either way. So you'll go, so this is, that's not one. And then once you've completed both sides, that's one. Okay, once you've done five total of those, and again, remember you're not turning your hips. So it's really important because that's the next part of what we're doing. We're moving more into a lunge now, so a normal lunge. So now we're gonna skip. So we're gonna go one, two, and we're, now we're turning our hips. So now I'm turning and facing and I'm sitting down into a lunge. Okay, then I'm pushing back and now I'm lunging with my left foot. So when I push off, so if I'm in that right lunge, I'm gonna push off this right leg, explode out into my first skip, second skip, and then I'm down, my left knee is forward. So here's what it looks like, full speed push, Skip, skip, left. I can add a little rotation if I like. Skip, skip, right leg lunge. Skip, skip, left leg lunge. Skip, lateral skips, right leg lunge. Last one. Skip, skip, left leg lunge. Okay. That's going to do it for our dynamic warm up. Okay, we're not going to spend a heap of time on that. We do have skipping as a part of our program as well. All right, so. Generally, we would go into some skipping now. <clears throat> so a skipping rope is another really good thing to have. If you don't have a skipping rope, we're just gonna do some pogo hops on the spot today. We're only gonna do 30 seconds, okay? But when you guys generally do this program, you'll do five sets of 30 seconds. All right, so we're just gonna do 30 seconds today. So our skipping. It's only gonna take us a short while, okay? Find a bit of space. Here we go. 30 seconds of pogo hop. So again, we're just on our on the balls of our feet. You can imagine like you're skipping. A lot of these programs, guys, you'll be able to do outside. Um, the foundational program you'll be able to do inside, like I am today. Okay, because you'll be using 
chairs and couches and things like that, unless you've got a home gym. All of these exercises basically for the 12s and 14s are body weight exercises, besides ones that are supported with a mini band. Um, you can use your basketball too. So if you've got a basketball, always good to get that in our hands a little bit. Okay, and stop there. So we would usually do five sets of 30 seconds with our skipping. So skipping rope, really good skill uh, to practice and get used to. So let's launch straight into our strength program or our, bullet, our bulletproof program. So our first exercise of our bulletproof program, I'm using, I'm gonna use my chair here. So I'll grab my chair. You just want something that's about, uh, yeah, probably about knee height, maybe a little bit below knee height. And again, like I said, we're only doing one set of every exercise. So we've got a lot to get through. This is our strength program. So we've got what's called here a rear foot elevated uh, squat. So we're gonna put, if I start with my left leg forward here, okay, so I'm gonna start with my left leg forward. I'm gonna put my right foot flat up on the bench or couch. If you don't have a bench or anything today, just do lunges, okay? If you don't have a bench or anything to rest your foot up on, just come forward, just come into this normal single leg, uh, just that lunge movement. But we, if you've got a couch or you've got something, make sure your foot is resting flat up on that chair. All right, we've got a nice, you know, straight shin angle. We can get a little bit of forward movement, but essentially our bodies are just moving straight up and down, okay? And what we're doing here is an ISO hold, okay? So follow along with me. We're just going to do one set. You're going to come down to the bottom and hold for five seconds, all right? We're doing four on each leg. So we're here. We're going to do our first rep. So we come down and hold. So we're down, one, two, three, four, Five, explode up. We're gonna do three more of those. Down, one, two, three, four, five, explode up. I'm not resting this knee on the ground, okay? So I've got my full weight down on this left leg. Three, four, five, explode up. One more on this left leg, down. One, two, three, four, five, explode up. Let's swap legs. So right leg forward now, left foot is up on this chair. We're coming down for the ISO hold. One, two, three, four, five, explode up. Down again, one, two, three, four, five, explode up. Here we go. Down, one, two, three, four, Five, explode up, last one. So that ISO hold, down, hold, stationary, two, three, four, five, explode up, okay? That's our rear foot elevated, okay? Rear foot elevated split squat with an ISO hold. So that, that is on our program. It, it says R-F-E-S-S. -S. ISO hold. So that is an acronym for rear foot elevated split squat and it's an ISO hold. Our next exercise, again, you can use the chair again if you like. If the chair is your preference, I've got the ottoman there as well. If you need something that's a bit more cushiony, you can use the couch. If you're in a home gym and you've got a bench press bench or something you could use, please feel free to use that. This is a variation on our hip thrust exercise. This is a variation on our hip thrust exercise. We're gonna get our shoulders on our chair here. So we're gonna come down. So our shoulder blades are just resting on the edge of our chair. All right, we want our feet far enough apart. Okay, we wanna want to just, maybe just be able to touch the back of your calf. So if you were to twist through your torso, Maybe just be able to graze the back of your calf, okay? That should be able to get you to a decent shin angle here so our shins are nice and straight. We're going to push up so that our hips, we make a nice straight line from our shoulders all the way to our knees here, okay? And what we're doing is a glute bridge or a hip thrust march, okay? So we're marching. So what we're going to do is we've got our left knee up, okay? Again, nice straight here with my left thigh. I hold for a second and then I come down and I'm going to put my right leg up. 
that's one rep. We're going to do five. Okay. So then I come back to my left. Okay. Back to my right. And hold for a second. That's two. All right. Here we go for three. And right leg. Make sure my glutes stay active. That's three. Here we go for four. And back to my left leg for the fifth. Fifth rep. And right leg. Again, making sure that grounded leg, that glute stays really active and then come down. All right, that's our five reps of our glute bridge march. If you don't have a chair or a bench, you can do that on the ground as well. So if you don't have a chair or a bench, you can easily just do that one from the ground as a normal glute bridge. So again, we've done these before. We're flat. Our back stays nice and square and flat with the ground. We've got that imaginary grape under our lower back. We're trying to put pressure on the grape, but we're not trying to squish it. And then from here, you push up into your glute, glute bridge and you would march from here. So you'd still get that knee drive and have your elbows down for a bit of stability. But that's how you can do that exercise without using a bench, couch, or chair if you don't have it around. Really good exercise for hip stability because we're changing legs. And the idea is that you try and keep your pelvis nice and stable as we're swapping legs. Okay, moving on. We're into our, don't mind me on my laptop, I'm just jotting down timestamps so, uh, so that we can get this uh, all right on the YouTube clip. So we're into now, a single leg deadlift, you guys know this pretty well. Okay, it's one of my favorites. But we're adding a different aspect to this because some of you will have been doing this for the last six to eight weeks. Those that are new, single leg deadlift is just basically balancing on one leg, okay? We're working on single leg balance, but keeping some hamstring strength as well and some stability through one leg. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start with our right leg. So I'm gonna start with this leg here. I'm gonna bring my left knee up. Okay, so you'll notice a lot of this stuff transfers. We think about basketball movements, we think about layups, we think about jumping off a single leg or off two legs to get a rebound. So we're gonna start with our left knee up, okay? And we're gonna kick that leg back as we pendulum our body forward. Again, we're gonna feel some stretch in that right hamstring here, and we're keeping that left leg active. Okay, from here, all right, for a bit of an extra challenge, if you wanted to go arms out, wide or overhead as a superman to get some upper body activation you can otherwise you can just have hands in front here and then we're going to swing through and drive that left knee up all right so what that looks like at full speed we're doing we're going to do five on each leg here what this looks like at full speed is right foot down left knee up okay i'm kicking that left foot back to the wall behind me, keeping my back straight, and then I swing through explosively and drive that left knee. And we go again. Let's go for five on each leg. So that was one. Get balanced, drive through. The idea is you're able to stay balanced on that single leg the whole time. So here's three. Swing through explosively. So we're getting that explosive contraction in our hamstrings. Kick back for four. Swing through explosively. And here's five. Swing through. Swap to our left leg. Okay, so I'm going to go to my left leg now. This will give you a slightly different angle. So again, I've got my right knee up. Kicking back. Swing through with that right leg. Knee drive. Try and stay balanced the whole time. Kick back. Knee drive. Swing through. Again, you can add some challenge arms if you like. Swing through. So it's a single leg deadlift with a knee drive. Okay, this, that's what this exercise is called when you see it on the floor, on your template, on your workout. Knee drive, there's five. Okay, very good. If you do need something to help with your balance, if you've got a wall nearby, okay, or you could use a chair if you're just starting out. Okay, so if I was doing, if I was on my left leg here, I could kick back and keep one hand on the chair to make sure my back stays nice and straight. Right, and that right up, okay? And then as you get more confident with that movement, move the chair away. 
and stop using something for uh, for stability there. So that's our single leg deadlift with a with a knee drive. All right, we're going to go into a bit of upper body now. So a bit of upper body. Sorry if I'm moving too quick for you guys, but we are recording this. So I need to I need to keep things moving. All right, so we're coming down to the ground. We're going to do a push up variation. So I think most of us push ups. Uh, just making sure we stay on mute. Okay, Mike, if you've got a question, feel free to chuck it in the chat for now. We will hopefully have time for questions at the end. Otherwise, please stay on mute. Okay, so we're doing a push up variation here. Okay, come down to the ground. If you've got a yoga mat or something, if you're outside, that's preferable. Otherwise, like I mentioned, you can always do this session inside, especially this foundation, this bulletproof strength session. So we're coming down to our push up. You can do this on your knees. So we've got two options for this one. So you can do this on your knees, which is what I'll start with, okay? So if we're starting on our knees, we've got our hands directly underneath our shoulders. We've still got our hips locked in, so we're not on all fours like so, okay? We don't have our bum up in the air. We've got our hips locked in, so almost like the reverse of our glute bridge we just did before. So this is a yoga push-up, okay? So there's a variation on the normal push-up. There's a little bit of extra movement to it, okay? So we start, we start here, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to come down into a push-up. Again, making sure, making sure when we do our push-up, our elbows stay in pretty tight with our body. Okay, they don't have to be right tight with our body, grazing our sides, but they can't be out wide like this either. So a lot of it has to do with where your fingers are pointing. Okay, so if my fingers are pointing in the same direction my head's pointing, generally my elbows are going to track in the right direction. But if my fingers are pointing at each other or pointing... 45 degree angles, then my elbows are going to flare out. We don't want too much of that. So again, a yoga push up. We start here, we come down for one. Okay, when you push up here, you're going to push back to your heels. Okay, so it's like a like a downward, uh, almost like a child's pose. So we push back, then we roll forward. So we roll forward, we bring our chest close to the ground, and we come into an upward dog position, and then we do another push up. Push back, child's pose, roll our body close to the ground through and into an upward dog. Then we lock in here and we into a push up. If you're doing these on your toes, and again, we're only doing, uh, we've got five of these. Yeah, five reps of the yoga push up because they're fairly, they're fairly demanding. You'll find there's a lot of shoulder movement because you're pushing back into that child's pose or that down dog. If you're doing these on your toes, come up onto your toes. It's the same sort of movement. So you go into a push up, but this time you're gonna push back into a down dog. So you're gonna push back and you bump straight up in the air and you stay on your toes. Then from here, you come down, you bring your face close to the ground, chest close to the ground, push up, here into an up dog, okay, so your arms are straight, okay, I'm pushing my hips to the ground, then I'm going to bring my hips up, and then I'm down for a push up again. And after I do that push up, I push straight back into our down dog like so. Scoop through, chest, body close to the ground as close as possible. You can bring your thighs to the ground here because up dog can be pretty taxing after a couple of yoga push-ups. So you can, you can rest here, okay? You can bring your hips to the ground or your thighs to the ground and looking up and then bring your thighs up again, all right? Or stay on your knees, up to you. Normal push-up and then back into either our child's pose if we're on our knees or back into our down dog if we're on our toes and we get that little stretch in our hamstring. So it's a terrific full body movement, uh, a bit of upper body, shoulders, chest obviously a little bit of triceps it's a great exercise that one okay we're into our second last exercise of our strength program here so we've got we've got our reverse plank you will for this one again you can do it on the ground but i would advise that you've got a chair and your couch okay or a couch and an ottoman at home here, I use a couch and an ottoman. I do this one indoors. Okay, so, but because I'm set up in another lounge room here, I don't have my couch. So what I would usually do here 
It's a reverse, it's pretty simple. You'll see when, you, when we get into the movement, reverse plank literally means a reverse plank. So most people know about our normal plank where we're in a prone hold with our elbows on the ground, our chest facing the ground. We're actually just flipping that in reverse. So we're working the muscles of our hamstrings, our glutes and our lower back. So we're gonna come into a similar position with our shoulders, our shoulder blades on our chair, similar to our hip bridge um, or glute bridge march. Shoulder blades sitting nicely on the chair and we're gonna put our legs straight up on the ottoman like so. Okay, so I see how my legs are nice and straight. I've got my heels up on the ottoman and I'm driving my hips up, okay? And we're just gonna hold in this position for 30 seconds. It's really simple. Okay, really simple, but a really, really good bang for your buck exercise. So again, don't let your hips sag like that. Keep your hips up. Okay, and a nice straight line from my shoulders all the way down to my heels. I should start to feel a little bit of, a little bit of tension in my hamstrings. My glutes are firing because I'm keeping my hips up. My lower back is working pretty hard as well here. All right, we're just holding in this position. All right, seems really simple. It's a really, really good exercise for that hamstring, that isometric hamstring strength. Okay, if you're doing these on the ground, you can do these on the ground. They're a little bit awkward, but essentially what you would do if you're doing these on the ground is you would start in a glute bridge. You would start in a glute bridge like so, and push your hips up, and then you would just slide your feet out. Okay, so you're still off the ground, but it's a bit harder because you don't have your shoulders raised. Then you would just slowly slide your hamstrings back into a glute bridge. Slide your feet out again. You can go one at a time. And slide hamstrings back in. Okay, you don't get as much of an isometric workout there. You get a little bit more movement through the hamstring, but it's still a really, really good way to do that exercise. Okay. All right, our last exercise here before we uh, have a quick drink break and we move on to our explosive session is, is a calf raise with a knee drive. So again, we've done calf raises before in our last program. We were just doing our calf raises here in a stationary sort of a position. Uh, now what we're going to do is you're going to need something to stabilize you a little bit. Okay, that could be a doorway. You could actually, the perfect spot to do it is between a doorway. Um, but today what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a chair, okay, to support me. All right, so I'm gonna put both hands on the back of the chair. All right, really simple, really nice and easy. The reason we call it a it's sort of a knee drive, it's a, sorry, a calf raise with a knee drive, is again, we're simulating those basketball movements. So we're simulating being back in a, in a stance or being in a triple threat and having to explode out of it, but we're working our calf over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my left leg first, so the leg that's closest to you. I've got my hands on the back of the chair here, okay? I'm gonna step my right leg back, okay? So I'm gonna step my right leg back into a bit of a reverse lunge, okay? And then I'm driving forward and up onto that left calf, and I'm driving my knee into that chair. Then I'm coming back down into a reverse lunge on that, that right knee comes back and then I'm driving forward and up and that left calf up onto the ball of my left foot. Back and drive forward and up, okay? So we're gonna do 12 of those on each leg. So see how we usually, when we did our calf raise, we'd just be here like this. That's okay, because we do jump straight up and down. But this one, we're turning a little bit more into like a sprint takeoff, okay? So we're here and we're up and we're forward. So our body comes forward and up, so we're back almost like we're pushing off to sprint and then we're bringing that knee forward into that chair. If you've got a doorway, that gives you a little bit more space to step back and then drive that knee all the way through the doorway. So you could use the doorway to stabilize you and still step back and then push up onto that calf. So 12 of those on each leg to finish our session. All right, guys, grab a quick drink. All right, that's got us at about halfway through the session now. So we're at about 35 past nine. So we've got 25 minutes, so we've still got quite a bit to get through. So really quick drink. But the beauty is we don't need to do our foam roll and our dynamic warm-up again for the next bit. So 
We're into our second program now. So that is our, those movements make up our bulletproof session. So like our strength program that I'd expect you guys would do at least once a week. Then this next session is called explode. Okay, so now we're really starting to put all that base foundation strength into really basketball specific explosive movements. Now, not all of these, I will warn you, not all of these exercises are we gonna be able to do today because um, you will need to, you will need a little bit more space. Okay, you need a little bit more space, but I'll demonstrate as best as I possibly can. So the first exercise, so we would have done our foam roll already. We would have done our dynamic warm up. Okay, and you, as I said, you'll get all this in the, in the program. The template will come out. It'll be a PDF. It'll be really easy to follow along with. Um, and we will have done our skipping. So we will have done our five by 30 second skipping. We're not going to need our chair or our couch at this stage. Ideally, you'd probably be doing this session, this, this explode session outdoors. Okay, ideally you do it near your hoop. Okay, you do it near your basket um, because some of the exercises you might actually just be able to shoot some free throws in between if you've got a hoop or if you, if you want to go to a school and do this at a school, um, the more space you've got to do this exercise, probably the better. So what we've got to begin with, is what we call a line acceleration deceleration. So I'm just going to use my, my, my trusty strap here and I'm going to shift my camera so that you guys can see that line, okay? But you guys can just use a line in the concrete or a line in the tile, wherever you are. If you're indoors, outdoors, just find a line that you can use. Hopefully everyone can see my little makeshift line there that I've used my rope for. So our line acceleration deceleration. It's pretty simple. All right, we're going for five reps. Okay, and we're going from right to left and then from left to right. So what I'm doing here, if I'm going from left to right, is I'm stepping out left foot first and then I'm meeting my right foot with it. So I'm going left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. So I'm doing five steps across. Now I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay, so the idea is, the idea is that we're acceleration, deceleration, but in a really, really short space here. Okay, so it's almost like our line hops. It's almost like just line hops, okay, but we're not hopping the line. Okay, that's why it's really important you've just got a line in the concrete, draw a line with some chalk, try not to use something that's raised like I've got here, because you actually want to almost like a sprint takeoff. So I'm going to show you what it looks like at full speed. Okay, so I'm going left here. I know it doesn't look like it on the screen. I'm going left, so I'm going to go left leg first. So this is what it looks like. We're down in a stance. Okay, so it's, a, it's like a sprint takeoff. Okay, so you're really exploding forward. You're really exploding forward and exploding back. Okay, now I'm going right, uh, left to right. Okay, so I'm going this way. So I'll go right leg first. You see how I'm pumping my arms as well? It's really important to keep that arm drive. Okay, so that arm drive, if I'm going left to right here, if I'm going right leg, okay, it's left arm. Okay, so it's left arm. Right arm with the left leg and then in reverse. Okay, so it's opposite side of your body. Just pump those arms, get that arm movement. So that's our line acceleration, deceleration there. Ooh, getting a sweat up. Okay, the next exercise is one of the ones we're not gonna be able to fully do today, but we will touch on it. And again, guys, with all these exercises in your, in your worksheet, your template that you sent out, it'll have full details of how many reps and how many sets you're doing, okay? So you get the full details of how many reps and sets you're doing. This next exercise, okay, is like a lean, okay? It's like a forced overdrive sprint. So we're going to start back, okay? And you, you know, you might only have 10 meters. You might have five meters, whatever you've got space you've got. I've only got about three meters in my lounge room here today. But if you were doing this on a basketball court, okay, this exercise is going to turn into a full sprint. Okay. So you might sprint to half court. Okay. You might sprint to full court, whatever you're feeling on the day. So there's a little bit of work in this one. Okay. It's a little bit of max effort. We want to get to almost full speed of sprinting. 
but how the exercise starts is we're standing both feet together, okay? And we're gonna start by leaning forward, okay? So you're gonna lean forward like so, almost like a, like a dance move, okay? I'm digging my toes into the ground, okay? So I'm gonna start with a lean forward and then right before I'm about to fall, right before I'm about to fall, I take off, okay? So it's a forward lean, okay? Almost like a, almost like a Michael Jackson lean. That's probably, that reference probably a bit old for you guys, but go and look up Michael Jackson leaning on YouTube. It was a dance move he used. So we lean forward and then just as we're about to fall, fall step forward and we take off into a sprint. What this encourages us to do is get really low and get our body angle nice and sharp. Okay, so see that movement there? If I, if I just told you guys to go out and do max sprints, you'd probably just start like this, standing up straight, and just take off, all right? It's really important, a really good way to train in that, that sprint technique is to go with the lean and then take off. What you want to do here is you're going to swap legs. So you're going to do three on each leg. So you'll do three on each leg into that sprint takeoff, all right? Great job. Okay, moving on. We've got to get through these pretty quickly now, guys. This next one, you're probably going to need to re-watch this again later, okay, when you come back to this exercise. It's called a split stick lateral. So, again, we're building on what we've done previously. If you've done my strength programs before, you're going to see that we're building on what we've previously done. So, we've done a lot of lateral jumping with a stick. Now, we're adding a little bit more footwork to it. So we're going to start nice and square here. The movement is, okay, when you're ready to go, you're going to drive right leg forward. So you're going to split your leg. So you start like this. You get right leg forward. So you jump to put your right leg forward. And then you go into from here, you're going to jump again to your right leg. So you're on a single leg and you're going to push off to stick on your left. So I'll go through that again really slowly. I'll go from the side. So I'm going to go right leg forward into a sort of a mini lunge. Then I'm coming back just onto my right leg and pushing out into a lateral stick. All right, you're gonna do five of those on each leg and you can alternate with these ones because there's a four stick. So watching again, I'm gonna go really slowly again, then I'm gonna do a couple at full speed, then we're gonna move on. But remember, you can always come back to this recording to watch the exercise. So right foot forward, then I come back and I just stick on a single leg right leg and then I explode out to my left. Okay, I'll do that again. Now I'm going to do it at full pace. So boom, boom, boom. I'll do it side on so you can see the footwork. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so it's almost like three movements. So we're going to do five right to left and five left to right. Left to right, we're going to go left leg forward. So left, back to left, push off and stick on the right. You guys, you guys know I love sticking on a single leg. That single leg landing is so important. So full speed, left to right. Boom, 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 boom. That's what that looks like. I'm sorry, guys. I know there's a bit in that, but we've got to move on. Okay. All right, next one. This one's another one. You're going to need a bit of space to do this one. It's called power skips. Power skips into a, into a one leg max jump so power skips for those that haven't done power skips is like an explosive skip so it's skipping as high as you can and as far as you can so usually you would need about you know up to the free throw line okay so four or five meters space to, to probably do this one okay so our max skips okay so our max skips are high pushing out as high as we can okay we're going to do two skips Okay, so you'll do two max skips, all right, if you've only got a little bit of space. Otherwise, you can keep going. And we're going to do three max skips on either leg. Okay, so we can do three max skips on either leg. All right, so what you'll do is skip and drive as high as you can and skip. Turn around, skip as high as you can and skip, all right. So instead of just skipping like this, we're going as high, we're trying to get as high vertically as we can. So we drive up and drive up, okay? I don't mind too much here whether you go 
right arm, right leg. If you want to go right arm, right leg, because that's similar to a layup, that's fine. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit more sport specific. But if we're working on sprint technique, you would go opposite hand to opposite leg. So you would go left arm with right leg. But I'm happy for you to go right arm, right leg here. Those are our power skips, okay? All right, next exercise. I know we're moving quickly, but we've got to. We've got our jump mechanics, okay? So we've got our two-legged, with our two-legged jump mechanics. So what that looks like here, sounds silly. I know I go over it all the time, but it's so important that the mechanics of our jumping and our landing are really, really well, you know, refined before we go doing too many plyometric exercises, okay? So this jump mechanics exercise is gonna look a bit goofy, it's gonna feel a bit goofy, um, but it's really, really important. All you're doing, okay, I'll start face on. Okay, I've got my feet shoulder width, hip distance apart, okay? Nice wide base. And all we're doing is starting with our arms straight up over our head, okay? And we're bending our knees and swinging our arms back all in one motion as quickly as we can. So, okay, so what it looks like from the side. Here, if you want, you can start on your tippy toes, okay? And then we're sitting our weight back into our heels and driving our arms back like that. Come up again, like so, okay? This is the mechanics. This is also the mechanics for if you're about to take off for a jump, but it should be the mechanics for when you land as well. Okay, now you might land and you might not go with your arms right back, but it's still a good habit to over-exaggerate, okay? It's like anything, we wanna over-exaggerate things here in practice. Okay, so a lot of it sticks when we do it in a game or when we're landing in a game. So that's our mechanics primer. All right, you're gonna do four of those. Okay, you got four of those. So it's a pretty simple one. Pretty simple one. Arms up, you can start on your toes. And again, we're just working on sitting our weight back into our hips. So you're not just bending your knees. It's not just there, okay? You're not just knees forward, hips straight. You're sitting all the way back onto an imaginary chair and you're swinging your arms and driving your arms through. Alrighty. So that's our mechanics primer. Our next exercise is building on that. So it's really just a build on that. So it's a mechanics primer. Again, so we're doing that. So we've done, we're gonna do sets of our mechanics primer and then we're gonna build and we're gonna go straight into a vertical jump, all right? So you're just gonna, it's real simple vertical jump. You're gonna do six vertical jumps. So all you're doing is you're swinging your arms. So you, again, you would start here, you can start up on your toes if you want, swing your arms through and jump up as high as you can, all right? Jump up as high as you can. So swing your arms through and back, Swing your arms through and jump as high as you can for six, okay? Use something as a bit of a guide. If you're outdoors, if you've got a shed or garage or you've got somewhere where you can mark the wall, you know, if you've got a hoop and you can lower to seven, eight feet and you can touch the net, use that as a goal. That practical jumping at a target is really important as well. So I'm indoors, so I can't touch the wall because I'll dirty the wall. But if I was in my garage, I might put a hand mark on my wall and try and touch that. So I would swing, I'd start up on my toes, arms high, swing through, and then I would touch up and try and touch as high as I can, try and beat that mark each time, all right? Remember your landing, okay? So don't let the mechanics all go to waste. Remember to land properly. We just worked on that landing. All right, guys, grab a quick drink. We're gonna finish off with our session that's about mobility and core. So this one, this one's called Reload, okay? So we've done... Bulletproof, which is our strength, our strength program. We've done Explode. We've done Explode and now we're doing Reload. So this is a bit of a recovery and core exercise for us. And we will need a chair. Um, you might need, your, you'll probably need your mini band as well. All right. And we're gonna get into this one now. So first exercise, you're gonna be flat on the ground. This is just, again, and it's good to do this exercise now because we are warming down a little bit. We've only got 10 minutes left in our session. We're warming down. I want you flat on your back. Okay, I'm gonna do my right leg first. So I'm gonna have my right leg straight up in the air. I'm gonna wrap my fingers together behind 
my thigh. So not on my knee, not on my knee, but just below my knee, further down my hamstring. I want to keep my left leg straight. So I want to keep my left leg nice and straight, keep that left hip locked in. Okay, and you're just going to apply gentle pressure back, so sort of driving uh, this, this knee and trying to pull it, not towards your chest, but just gently bringing it back while keeping that left leg straight. Okay, from here, we're resting from here. We're just going, we're trying to straighten that right leg. Okay, and then we're bending it. This is called a hamstring floss. So we bend it and we straighten it again. You should feel that stretch. It's going to be a pretty intense stretch in that right hamstring. Left leg stays straight the whole time. So do not bring your left leg up like this. Don't bring it off the ground. Don't let it bend. It'll want to bend a little bit and your hip will want to bend, especially when you go to the top of this hamstring floss. So again, stretch here, come back down. Okay, we're going to swap legs. We'll do about five of those on either leg. Stretch, come down, stretch, come down. Stretch again, this whole time, this right leg staying straight and locked in. I can feel a bit of pressure in that right hip, trying to stay pressed against the ground as well. But I'm feeling most of the stretch back here in this left hamstring. Okay, that's our hamstring floss. Really good one for you guys to do at the end of a session. Uh, but it's going to be at the start of this session to get us warmed up. All right, next exercise, you'll need a chair or you'll need a couch or something. Okay, it's called a hip flexor tilt. You can do this one of two ways. You don't have to have your foot flat up on a chair. Okay, you can just come down into a hip flexor stretch like so. So which is like the bottom of our lunge position. If you're comfortable here, and again, we're working on driving. So I've got my right knee down, my left leg forward, and I'm just driving that right glute. Okay, I'm driving that glute. So I've got my right, I can feel that stretch in my right hip flexor. Okay, if you wanted to go on a chair to add a little bit of, a little bit more to that stretch, keep your right foot flat. Okay, and bring that knee down. Bring that knee down, nice and flat. And then from here, again, I'm still driving that right glute, but I'm going arms up overhead, okay? Arms up overhead, and I'm tilting away from the grounded leg. So I'm tilting, if my right knee is down here, I'm tilting to my left, and I'm doing three reps, okay? If I come up, let's get rid of my yoga strap here. If I go onto my left leg here, you'll see my left knee comes down. The chair might be a bit high for me, actually. But I've got my right leg forward. I've got this left glute working. I've got my arms straight up overhead and I'm tilting. Tilt. But I'm keeping that glute flex the whole time. So I'm feeling that stretch in that hip, but I'm also feeling it down the side of my obliques a little bit. Good stuff. All right, next exercise. Next exercise is we're going to start getting into our sort of core stuff here. Okay, so we're going to start getting into our core stuff and our, uh, um, and our, here we go, getting into our core, but we, each exercise has got a little bit of mobility built into it as well. So the first one is, a, is an ankle mobility exercise. You won't need your chair anymore. So again, we're starting in a bit of a lunge position. Starting in a bit of a lunge position. We shift our weight forward onto that front leg. Okay, so almost like when we do our ankle mobility and we're trying to bring our knee towards the wall. So you should have your ankle is really loaded here and you'll feel a bit of stretch in your calf, in your lower calf. And then from here, you're gonna push up into a knee drive, okay? Come back down. So from a loaded calf position, so it's a loaded, knee drive here. So we're loading some weight on top of that calf, keeping that heel down, feeling that stretch in the back of our, in the back of our leg, and then we're pushing up, okay? The reason we do this is because so often we move from a really loaded calf position. Like when we take off into a sprint, we're down like this and we push off, okay? And when we do mobility, we need to do it from a loaded position. Good, good. So again, just quickly, I go to my left leg here. So I'm forward here. So I get that forward motion in my lunge first. So I get that knee past my toe. So I get that knee over toe first, and then I drive 
up, okay, in that loaded ankle position. Next exercise, we've done this before, you guys know it. You guys know it, it's our rocking plank, okay? So we're down in a plank, we're down in a plank, but we're, we're adding some movement to it, all right? So we're here, you guys can still see me, we're down in our plank, we've got our elbows directly under our shoulders, and we're shifting, using our toes to move our body weight past our hands and then back, past our hands and back. So we call this one a rocking plank. So it's a really good plank exercise, adding some dynamic movement to an old faithful. All right, so again, you can do this on your knees, okay? You can do this on your knees, you rock forward, you push back and you can maybe bring your hips up, you rock forward into a plank, or you can just hold in a normal plank. Well, I like to go on my toes, push forward and back, push forward and back, working on our core muscles there. So we'd only be, you're only doing a few of those, you're only gonna do five of those. So if you're worried about not being able to do a plank, we shouldn't have to hold the plank for too long there. It's more about the movement back and forward than it is about holding the plank for a minute or 30 seconds. All right. Last two exercises, okay? So last exercise here for the core is a dead bug, okay? So we've got a dead bug. You will have seen these before. You maybe don't know what they're called. Dead bug here. So we've got our knees, so we've got our back flat on the ground. We've got our knees directly over our hips and hands up straight overhead, okay? Arms straight up from our shoulders. I'm gonna drop my left foot as I drop my right arm. I'm not letting it touch the ground. I'm not letting either of them touch the ground. I'm trying to keep my lower back nice and stable here. Okay, then I bring them back up and I alternate legs. So again, metaphor I like to use is imagine we've got a grape under our lower back. We're trying to press down on that grape a little bit without squishing the grape entirely. So arms up overhead, left leg, right arm, left arm, right leg. And we just alternate like that trying to maintain that core stability and not letting our lower back come off the ground too much. And you should, again, we're putting this, it's a pretty athletic movement, similar to a layup, okay? Like I said, our reps and sets will be in our program. We're gonna do, we're gonna do six reps of that. So right and then left would be one rep, we will do six. For this last exercise, really quickly, you'll need your mini band. Okay, so this is an ankle and foot strengthening exercise, really important for as we return to course. So grab your mini band and chuck it around your ankles. If you don't have your mini band, you can still do this without your mini band. This is still a really good exercise. The mini band just adds a little bit extra to it. We want a nice wide base, okay, like a, like a squat position. And all we're doing from here is we're rolling our feet in and then rolling our feet out. So we're literally, almost like that movement you make when you roll your ankle, you're rolling in and rolling out. Can everyone see that? So rolling in on our, almost on our big toe and on our arch, bringing our knees together a little bit and rolling out. And you're controlling that movement with your feet. You can do it without a band. You don't need a band. Rolling out onto the outside edge of our feet rolling in onto the inside edge of our feet. Okay, what we're going to do, we're gonna do 10 of those. Okay, so one into the arch of our foot is one onto the outside of our foot. Sorry, that's one. So that's one full rep. So in, out, that's one, in, out, that's two. If you don't have a mini band, that's okay for that. that exercise. You do not have a mini band, that just adds a little bit extra to it. All right, guys, that's it for me today. That's our program. So there's our three programs. We've got sort of 20 exercises today. I'm sorry for the mad rush. Thank but again, you. We, are, we are recording this. So Thank when we you. send out the... Uh, Thank no you. worries, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank
website and up on YouTube. You can, right. There'll be timestamps for each exercise so you can come back and watch. Good on you guys. Thanks, Sherry. Thank you. Guys, good job. Thank you. Good job, guys. See you later.